Hi, for this example, what we're going to do is we're going to construct a 95% confidence interval using the TI Inspire. For this one, we're going to construct a confidence interval for the mean since we are given the SAT scores of 12 randomly selected high school students, and it does tell us to assume the population is normally distributed. Since it doesn't give us the population standard deviation anywhere, that tells us that we want to use the T interval. So remember the conditions, you must always check conditions and assumptions before you start. Um, and always refer to your textbook because some texts are very different in what the expectations are. Um, the text that I currently teach from requires that sigma is unknown. And so for this one, sigma is definitely not known. Remember, sigma is the population standard deviation. But we can find the sample standard deviation, which is denoted as S. So we can find S. Because we have to find S, I recommend using some kind of technology for this, which is why I'm using the TI Inspire. Because if I wanted to find S by hand, Remember that the formula for this is it's the sum of all of our terms um, minus the mean. And we would square all of those deviations. So it's the sum of the squares of the deviations divided by the square root of, sorry, divided by n minus 1. And then we would take the square root of this whole thing. So to do hand calculations, we would first have to do the hand calculations to find the x bar. Then we would have to take each individual point, subtract the x bar. Then we would have to square all of those deviations. And so with this, it's just too time consuming. So I truly advise using some kind of technology to help you with this. Um, the other things that have to be known is we have to have a random sample, which it says explicitly in here. It says randomly selected. And either we have to have n greater than or equal to 30 or normally distributed. So since it says to assume normal distribution, we can go ahead and continue. Like I said, check your text to see exactly what they are looking for. So if you remember the T interval, the things that we have to know in order to use the formula is we have to know our X bar, which is our mean. I'm going to use technology to help me find that. We have to know our sample standard deviation. Again, we're not given that, so we have to use technology to find it. We need to know our sample size, and our sample size is 20. And since we are dealing with T, we need to know our degrees of freedom, which remember is N minus 1. So we would use 19 because 20 minus 1 is 19. We also need to know um, our critical value, our T star or TC, depending upon your text. So let's find that now. In order for this, because we are finding a 95% confidence interval, what we would do is we would pull up a T table to help us find that. You can also use technology, but honestly, it's quicker just to use the table. Um, we would look for our level of confidence, and the level of confidence is at the bottom, so we would need 95% confidence. And then we would go to our degrees of freedom, which is 11. And so I would be using this number right here, the 2.201. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. And then remember that the formulas, depending upon your text, if you have to show at work, some professors don't require work. If you have just a multiple choice test, it doesn't matter. Um, if you're doing this in a hurry and you just need the answers. Um, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong part. So for this, the formula, one textbook that I've taught from uses X bar plus or minus T star with degrees of freedom times S divided by the square root of N. The text that I'm currently using um, uses X bar minus E or X bar plus E where E represents the margin of error, and it's found by doing TC, which is why I put T star or TC. It just depends on your textbook.
times s divided by the square root of n. Again, stats textbooks are not at all consistent with this. So once we have all of our important information, we'll just plug in our values. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this in, all of these values, into a lists um, or a spreadsheet screen on the TI Inspire. So I'm going to pull up the TI Inspire. Okay, I already have it stored in there, but you would select this one if you're starting from scratch. I already entered it in, so the SAT, and then I put all 12 values in here already, so you didn't have to watch me type that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Control and I, and I'm going to add a calculator screen. After I add the calculator screen, I'm going to hit Menu, and go down to statistics which is option six and confidence intervals which is also option six the name of the interval you have to know so that you use the correct one so in this one we're using the t interval and then it's going to ask us do we know the data or do we know the stats in this case we actually know the data because that's what we plugged into our spreadsheet so it's going to ask you for your list, SAT, and your confidence level, which is already set at 95%, and I'm just going to click OK. And then this gives me all of the information. The margin of error, that part right there represents this E, the TC times S divided by the square root of N. Okay, um, this would be your lower bound of your interval, the 1600.43. Your upper bound of your interval would be 1844.57. This is your X bar, so your um, sample mean. And then right here, this represents our sample standard deviation. So I already have all of that written down on a piece of paper. I'm going to go ahead and plug it into here. But I would just, like I said, pull all of this important information out of the calculator directly because to do hand calculations just takes way too long. So now if we plug it in to our formula, like I said, this is just the shorthand. I'm just going to use this. We would do 1722.5 plus or minus, and then we would just plug in our 2.201 times our standard deviation, which is 192.123, divided by the square root of 20. And then that gives us our confidence intervals, which our lower bound was 1600.43. And our upper bound was 1844.57. And then remember, it's always important to interpret it in context. So the interpretation of this is that we can say with 95% confidence, the mean SAT score for high school seniors is between 1600 and 1845. And the only reason that I rounded was because most likely they're going to round it. They're not going to give it to you as a decimal. Um, you can leave the decimals. It kind of just is one of those things depending upon the situation. Um, as always, just to recap of what you have to do with the confidence interval is you always want to check to see which interval you want to use, so you need to know the conditions. And like I said, check your textbook because it could be different. Write out all of your important information as well as the formula. Um, check your textbook to see if it could be slightly different. I've seen a lot. That's the one problem that I have with stats is that every textbook I look at does things slightly different. And then always go back and express it um, in context of the original problem. As always, thanks for watching. Please continue to check out all of my content.